After coveting Willow for three years, I finally gave in and abducted her to my home. I fastened a silver chain around her ankle and told her never to even think about leaving me in this lifetime. In the first month, she preferred death over yielding, wanting me to set her free. During the second month, she slowly started to compromise, tacitly permitting me to share the bed with her. In the third month, she began to push me even further, interrogating me as to why I was five minutes late coming home. Was I out fooling around with other women? Seeing the woman in front of me playing with the silver chain, with a slight redness in the corners of her eyes, I broke down. After all, who is the real Yandera here? You're five minutes late again today. Willow said coldly, sitting on the bed, looking at me. Jacob, our company closes at six, and even with traffic, it only takes twenty minutes to get home. But you've been five minutes late for three days in a row. Are you fooling around with some woman again? She sneered, her red lips curling into a dangerous arc. Don't tell me I'm about to have a new roommate moving here. I swallowed, watching nervously as the woman in front of me played with the silver chain. She slowly leaned forward, parting her long legs and kneeling on either side of me, sitting atop me looking down, the corners of her eyes flashed a cool laugh. Did you forget what I said yesterday? One more time for every minute you're late. She wound the silver chain around my foot. Maybe this chain suits you better than me. I looked at her in horror, trying to explain, but she firmly covered my mouth, leaving me no choice but to scream in my heart. Who the hell is the real Yandere here? She was supposed to be an unreachable high lady. Two months ago, I did the most criminal thing in my life. I kidnapped my boss, Willow. This was the third year of my secret crush on her. She was previously my senior at school. After graduation, I swallowed my pride and begged left and right, finally managing to join her company through a referral. At first, I was just glad to be near her without expecting her to reciprocate my feelings. But the more I watched her, the more I yearned for her, so I decided to confess. However, on the day I planned to confess, I accidentally caught her intimate moment with a man, and she was even holding a large bouquet of roses. Frustrated and angry, my fury led to a daring and twisted idea. I would tie her up and take her home, so I asked her to escort me home claiming I wasn't feeling well. Under the pretext of getting a drink upstairs, I lured her to my home and got her drunk with a bottle of beer. Willow's tolerance to alcohol was terrible. I had never seen an Irish person with such poor drinking capacity before. She was truly a disgrace to Ireland. While she was unconscious, I dragged her to my bedroom and tied her onto the bed using a thin silver chain I had just purchased. Then, I faced a challenging decision. Yes, I wanted to make a move, but she was unconscious. There was no point in me fantasizing alone, so I had to wait for her to wake up. An hour later, Willow stirred, awakening. She looked at the chain tied around her foot and frowned. Jacob, are you detaining me unlawfully? She asked. I felt cold sweat replacing my earlier enthusiasm as I forced out a warning. For the rest of your life, don't even think about leaving me. Don't think of escaping, this chain is made of titanium alloy. It's not just you, even an elephant couldn't flee. Looking at her strange gaze, I decided to tell her the truth. You, like me? My face flushed as I stammered a response. Yes, I've liked you for three years. I didn't mind you not reciprocating my feelings, but you were even with another man. I could never allow that. You should stay obedient here. In your eyes, there should only be me. Your thoughts should be about me only, and your body should belong to me only. But Willow replied coldly. Impossible. I advise you to let me go as soon as possible. There's no chance I'll surrender. After I dropped a few more tough lines, I fled from the bedroom in a fluster. Truthfully, I regretted my actions almost immediately. This was illegal detention, a crime. And Willow was no pushover. She seemed untouchably elegant, but rumor had it she was a black belt in Taekwondo and had even studied Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I had personally witnessed her subdue someone who had disturbed her. The chain I mentioned was not made of titanium alloy. It was merely a cheap dog chain I had purchased, just finger thick. A strong yank from her would be enough to break it. Would she beat me up when she got out? Yet, I was unable to resist her. 
Frustratingly, I gritted my teeth, ready to make the best of my circumstances. I was set on this dangerous beauty. During the first month, Willow was as defiant as she claimed. Every time I entered the bedroom, she would stare at me with a cold, deathly gaze. Every time I tried to touch her, I was deterred by it. Several times, I sneaked into her room at night, but as soon as I lightly touched her, she would open her eyes. The moonlight reflected in her eyes made her look like an awakened vampire. It gave me a start, and I dared not go again. But she also didn't attempt to leave. It seemed like she truly believed my lies, and the chain that tethered her to the spot was like a small twig tying up an elephant. Luckily, the chain was long enough that she could still access the insert bathroom without any issues. Thinking that I could not soften her heart through force, I tried to melt it with love. Every day, I would go into her room and recite the history of my crush on her, but she never responded. When I confessed how much I liked her, she would just turn away, as if disgusted to even look at me. By the end of the month, I slowly grew disheartened. I figured that maybe this wasn't going to work. Forced love could never be sweet. At most, I could only sneak glances at her. Without her consent, I could not do anything else. Perhaps I should return her back and turn myself in. I also knew, realistically, a person like Willow would never fall for someone like me. She was always the most dazzling existence among crowds, while I was merely a dull backdrop. Falling for Willow was too easy. Back when I first joined the literary club, we were asked to produce a performance. I had planned a piano and violin duet with a girl, but the girl's boyfriend became jealous and threatened to break up with her if she went on stage with me on the day before the performance. Suddenly without a partner, I was helplessly adrift. Willow, who happened to pass by, picked up the violin and offered. Play. I'll accompany you. The performance was excellent and when the final note dropped, the audience erupted into applause. Later on, I found out that Willow was not even part of our club. She was the student council president and simply stopped by because she felt sorry for me. When I went to thank her afterwards, she merely nodded and left. For her, that moment was probably an insignificant blip in her life. But for me, from that day on, she was the only one in my eyes. Later, when she graduated and started her own business, I joined her company. However, her attitude towards me remained lukewarm. Even now, after going to such lengths to bind her and bring her home, she still refused to submit. I let out a sigh and decided to visit her tonight for the last few times. Once I've had my fill, I would release her and let her go home. Unexpectedly, Willow wasn't asleep this time. As soon as I came up to the bed, she grabbed my wrist. Just when I was scared out of my wits, Willow opened her eyes. It was quiet at midnight, with only the sound of my beating heart and her hoarse voice. Jacob, are you sick? She asked, illusion or not, it seemed like there was a twinge of disappointment in her eyes, I stuttered, unable to come up with a response, and she sat up rubbing her temple. You want to sleep with me that badly? I nodded. Of course, if I didn't want to, why would I have tied her up? Willow stared at me for a while. Then, just like a highborn lady forced into prostitution who had to reluctantly accept a client, she sighed heavily and said, Fine. You can sleep here tonight. But remember, we can only sleep, nothing more. Happiness came abruptly. I nodded repeatedly. If we couldn't do it then we wouldn't, but once I'd moved in, how far would other things be? Willow glanced over, looking a bit disgusted. Get your pillow. From that night on, I finally got to share a bed with Willow, my wish fulfilled. Every day I could blissfully watch her, my dreams seemed to turn pink. The only pity was that Willow would wake up gloomy every morning. She must have felt humiliated even though she'd physically conceded. Another month passed this way, and Willow seemed a bit restless. From being indifferent to me at the start, she had started to manage my life. Even the time I got off work fell within her purview. I didn't understand why the company still functioned without her, as if nobody realized the boss was missing. In fact, the business was growing, and recently, due to a lack of manpower, a batch of interns were hired. The intern assigned to me, Vanessa, was a college student who hadn't graduated yet. She was 168 centimeters tall, had a prominent nose with a small mole, and had long, straight lashes visible when she looked down. 
She was a sweet talker, always addressing me as bro and was diligent, asking lots of questions even after work. I admit that I'm a sucker for beauty even though Willow was the only one in my heart. But who could resist such a beauty? So the first time I went home, I was half an hour late. That day when I came home, Willow's face was darker than the night outside. When I served her dinner, she plopped herself onto my lap and buried her head into my shoulder. Just when I thought she had finally come around and my spirits were soaring, she said, Why do you have the smell of perfume on you? I was taken aback, recalling the faint, fresh scent of Vanessa. It was probably from teaching her to use the company's printer earlier, when we might have been too close. Did Willow have a dog's nose? How could she tell? Seeing that I didn't respond, Willow sneered. Every day you tell me how much you like me, but before three months are up, you're already tired and have another woman outside, right? Once you get what you want, you no longer cherish it. Jacob, I see you for what you are now. Wait a minute, what's with this tone like a scorned woman? I quickly explained, no no, the intern was just very eager to learn, so I taught her how to use the printer. She can't even operate a printer? Skylark's threshold is so low now that any moron can enter? Willow's expression darkened further, and she pulled out a phone from under the pillow. What's her name? I'll have HR fire her. I widened my eyes. Wait, where did you get this phone? Didn't I confiscate your phone? Why didn't she call someone to rescue her if she had a phone? Willow was startled, her expression blank for a split second. Then, she tossed the phone and pushed me down onto the bed. The flickering light danced on her clavicles. The shadowed hollows utterly captivated me, pushing thoughts of the phone to the back of my mind. Willow sat atop me, a chilling smile playing on the corners of her lips. She untied a silver chain that had somehow come off her ankle and used it to tie my hands to the bedpost, her voice indifferent. You came home half an hour late today. I'm going to punish you. After that, Willow and I settled into this unclear relationship. She never spoke about it, so I never asked. I feared that the answer I would get was not what I wanted. I had grown accustomed to pursuing her, and too much love made one lose courage. Perhaps when one is doing well in love, the career may be at a low ebb. The next evening when I was packing up to leave after work, Rose, the team leader of our group, leaned against my desk. I frowned. Rose used to ignore me and was always haughty when talking to me. However, after she learned that my family had fully paid for a house locally, she set her sights on me. She was from the countryside and wanted to stay in the city and buy a house with her salary, which wasn't realistic, so she started harassing me. I gently declined each time out of consideration for her being my superior, but she was like a piece of gum, difficult to shake off. Jacob, a new Japanese restaurant has just opened in the east of the city, offering you a close-knit opportunity to interact with your leader. How about treating me to dinner tonight? She asked. Annoyed, I could no longer conceal the irritation on my face. I'm sorry, but I'm occupied tonight. What are you busy with? Got a girlfriend? I paused and nodded, yes. But Rose still wouldn't let it go. Who are you fooling? I've never seen your girlfriend. Are you feeling the pressure of having dinner with me? Don't be nervous. I'm easy to get along with. Excuse me, I need to leave. Fed up, I bypassed her. Seeing that I wasn't hearing her, Rose snapped at me. What are you so arrogant about, Jacob? You just bought a house, right? Let me tell you, I can buy one anytime I want. The place you bought, it's called a suburb, did you know? I wouldn't even bother looking at it. If I want, I'll buy one in the harbor area. Ignoring her, I continued to the elevator, but she grabbed my arm, ready to pick a fight. Suddenly, a slim and fair hand forcefully pulled her wrist. Vanessa scoffed. So green with envy because someone bought a house? You could just sell yourself. Oh, wait. She swept Rose up and down with her eyes, chuckled and said. But look at you, if you did go sell yourself, wouldn't you have to pay the buyer instead? Rose was so angry that her lips were trembling, but she struggled several times and couldn't break away. She couldn't retort back at Vanessa, so she had to leave with a pale face. I looked at Vanessa. Thank you. 
The malice and indifference on Vanessa's face dissipated instantly, and she returned to her clear-eyed college girl persona. No problem, Jacob. If you feel uncomfortable arguing with women, let me handle it. I'll give you a lift home, it's raining outside. I thought for a moment and nodded. My car is pretty old, don't mind it. Vanessa drove an old-fashioned Honda that looked quite aged. As I buckled up, I couldn't help but say, thank you for today. But Rose is a petty person, I'm afraid she might target you later. Vanessa corner of her mouth curled into a smile. Do I look like I'm afraid of her? She was driving with one hand on the steering wheel. The watch on her wrist was worth 10 cars like the one she was driving. Actually, my colleagues always guessed that she might be some rich lady trying to experience life. After all, you can hide poverty, but the sense of slack and luxury that Vanessa exudes couldn't be masked. But it's fine, as long as her family has status, then Rose should be okay. I felt relieved. But Jacob, you're going home so early, are you really going to see your girlfriend? Vanessa glanced at me. She's not really my girlfriend. I didn't know how to describe my relationship with Willow. Could I say she was the woman I had been unlawfully detaining and had a physical relationship with? I could only vaguely answer a friend. Vanessa laughed. That's good. I thought I didn't have a chance. I wasn't oblivious to Vanessa's affections towards me. At the time, she was a trainee, and the old sperms were afraid that she would snatch leadership positions when she came in, so they were unwilling to properly guide her and pushed her to me. Over the days, I'd been genuinely teaching her, and slowly she clung to me more and more, finding countless reasons to find me in our office every day. Even colleagues saw it and asked me if she was pursuing me. But the one I liked was Willow. However pretty the college girl, I could only appreciate her. I waved my hand, Skylark does not allow office relationships. Moreover, we have a three-year age gap. You should save your energy for some younger guys. Don't waste your time on me. Vanessa, however, just smiled without saying a word. When we arrived downstairs, before I could even unbuckle my seatbelt, she leaned in. A familiar fragrance lingered faintly at my nose, mixed with some indecipherable scents. The seatbelt is tangled. She was too close, I dared not move. A few seconds later, she untied the seatbelt. Jacob, aren't you going to invite me upstairs for a cup of tea? Her eyes were filled with unmasked anticipation. I felt my face heat up, maybe due to the high temperature in the car. Almost embarrassingly, I opened the car door, it's not convenient today, maybe next time. Thank you. Then, I rushed up the stairs as if running away. Today was supposed to be a good day for me to get home early, but due to this little incident, I was five minutes late. I looked at Willow who was looking down at me from above. Checking me once every minute. I guess I won't be free until midnight. My brain was spinning fast, and I pushed her and shouted angrily, Why are you shouting at me? Did you know I was harassed at the company today? What kind of people are you recruiting for the company? Any trash can be scraped into the company. Willow stopped her movements, frowning deeply. Who harassed you? I didn't look at her, Rose from the marketing department. She insisted on having dinner with me since she found out I bought a house. She was very persistent. Willow got off the bed, picked up her phone. A few seconds later, someone answered the call. Her voice gave me chills. Is there a person named Rose in marketing? Um, let her pack and leave tomorrow. Tell all the companies we cooperate with that if they hire her, we will terminate our cooperation. She hung up the phone and turned around. Why didn't you tell me about such things before? I mumbled, what relation do we have? What's the use of telling you? Willow fell silent, her face a bit pale. I suddenly remembered the question Vanessa asked me today and dropped my gaze. Willow, what exactly are we? What do you really think? She was willing to play this detention game with me. We've had the most intimate relationships numerous times, but she never brought up what we were to each other. Perhaps it was because I wasn't in a good mood today. My mind was a mess. Maybe Willow was just bored and amusing herself with me. If she really had feelings for me, why would it always be so vague and unclear between us? I lacked courage because I liked her too much, then what about her? It's because she doesn't like me at all. 
My throat was suddenly a bit bitter, and I threw the silver chain that Willow had long pulled off on the bed. You don't have to give me an answer right now. If our feelings are mutual, then I hope to see you at home when I get off work tomorrow. But if you're not interested in me, you can leave tomorrow. I finished speaking and turned and left somewhat awkwardly. I didn't want to speak clearly with her, but just looking at her made me nervous. I didn't dare to think, there were always many men pursuing Willow, among them were certainly those who were much better than me. What would she like about me? I couldn't bear her rejection. That night, we didn't talk to each other, the house was silent. Only occasionally was there a fine noise of the silver chain coming from the bedroom. I didn't sleep for the whole night. All day long the next day, I had no intention of working. Coincidentally, it was a particularly busy day. The leaders asked us to contact customers. My head was buzzing as I made calls all day, only relaxing when I got off work. After dragging my exhausted body to the front door, I took a deep breath and unlocked the door. I wanted to delay coming back for a while, but every minute of delay made me feel uneasy. In the end, I decided to come back. Anyway, it's the same no matter whether you brace for it or not. A swift pain is better than a lingering one. Besides, Willow wouldn't necessarily not like me at all. We had snuggled up countless times late at night. She would sigh my name in my ear, at least at the moment when we were holding each other. I felt she loved me. I closed my eyes and walked into the house. The living room was quiet, so silent that you could hear a pin drop. My blood ran cold, and I rushed into the bedroom in two strides. The bedroom was empty. Only a dim silver chain lay on the bed. The quilt was neatly folded, and the bedsheets were so smooth, it was as if no one had ever slept in the bed. The dusky light of the evening reflected fluttering dust in the air. I stood alone in the divided light and shadow, slowly reaching out to hold my heart. Strange. There isn't any wound, why does it hurt so much? It was as if the sentimental thing inside me had shattered on its own, in the end leaving only a floor of cold remnants. Well, a voice suddenly appeared in my messy mind. Sleeping with her for so long, I should consider myself lucky. What more could I ask for? Originally, we were not from the same world. I reached out and picked up the silver chain. The chain had already lost its warmth. It felt like a chunk of ice when held. Willow never showed up again. She didn't even come back to the company. I figured she might be avoiding me because she felt embarrassed. Her phone was unresponsive. I couldn't get in touch with her. I lay alone on the bed where she slept for three months, and when daybreak came, I blocked all her contact information. Even though I was trying hard to persuade myself, I still couldn't get over it. Those late-night embraces and warmth, they were all fake. From beginning to end, I was like a clown. Willow never liked me, not even a bit. The summer rain came abruptly. A torrential downpour started as I left work. I didn't bring an umbrella, and I couldn't catch a taxi either, so I just walked home in the rain. As I was passing a school, I saw a young couple in love. The boy took off his school uniform and shielded the girl's head. Both of them ran into the rain closely pressed together. How nice, rain showers are romantic when it's two people. For one person it would just be stupidity. The rain was getting heavier, I could barely open my eyes. But that's okay, now I don't know whether it's rain or tears on my face. I should be embarrassed, I'm not a 17 or 18 year old kid anymore, yet I'm this messed up over a breakup. Just as I was blindly wiping the water off my face, a car horn suddenly sounded behind me. A black Mercedes Benz G-Class broke through the rain curtain and stopped by the roadside. Vanessa, wearing a tank top and shorts, shielded her head with her hand and rushed down. Jacob, get in the car! After drying my hair with the clothes handed over by Vanessa, I looked at the label and fell silent. If I remember correctly, I saw this piece of clothing in a boutique last month. An LV checkered hoodie, worth $6,000, almost two months of my salary. I looked at the unconcerned Vanessa with mixed feelings. Do you know how much this piece of clothing costs? Vanessa glanced at it. I don't know. I just grabbed it at the mall when I went home last week because it was getting colder. Oh, the despicable rich. They can casually grab a $6,000 LV at a mall while I have to check the price tag even when I buy underwear. Who bullied you? I gave a bitter smile. Nobody, no one bullied me. 
I just had a breakup. After thinking for a while, I added, actually, it's not exactly a breakup, it's more like a confession that was rejected. Vanessa didn't say anything. After a while, she reached out and touched me. It's her loss. Jacob, take out what's in my pocket. She suddenly said. Something was bulging in her pocket. Feeling a little embarrassed, I tried not to touch her as I reached in and pulled it out. It was a small blue velvet box. When I opened it, there was a rose tie clip inside, encrusted with a row of diamonds, delicate and beautiful. I saw it the other day and thought it suited you very well. There was a smile in her eyes. I was shocked. No, no, this is too expensive, I can't accept it. Just consider it a gift for the help you've given me these days. Don't refuse it, I'm resigning to go back to school tomorrow. I was stunned. In the end, I still gave the tie clip back to her. I appreciate your gratitude, but you don't have to give a gift. So, will you come back later? I realized as the words came out that I had asked a very stupid question. A wealthy girl like Vanessa must have family property. There's no way she would come to work in someone else's company. Sure enough, she looked at me. Jacob, do you not want me to leave? But after I graduate, I need to go home and work, so I probably won't be coming to Skylark anymore. I see. I was slightly disheartened. The days spent with Vanessa were happy, she was the kind of person who could make one happy quickly. The thought that I wouldn't be seeing her anymore left me feeling a tad bit regretful. But I will still come to find you to hang out with in the future. She winked at me. When we got downstairs, Vanessa escorted me to the hallway. Just as I was about to leave, she called me. I looked up and Vanessa took out the tie clip and gently pinned it for me. She carefully adjusted my tie. We were so close that I could count each of her long eyelashes. For a moment, my heart skipped a beat. One step away was the rain pouring down, blocked outside, and in this tiny space were only the two of us facing each other. Vanessa looked up at me, and it was then I noticed that her eyes were very light, the color of honey like amber. Jacob, I... Her words were interrupted by an incisive voice. What are you guys doing? I turned around sharply to see Willow, standing in the rain with an umbrella. She was wearing a well-tailored black suit skirt, a look of mockery flashed through her gold-framed glasses. No wonder you're not answering my calls, not replying to my messages, so you have a new love interest. Willow's thin lips pulled into a smile mixed with contempt and anger. Jacob, you really are something, you say how much you like me, is it what you say to everyone? I was shocked, and then filled with anger, tightly clutching my fingers. Willow, are you crazy? You are the one who left first, and now you are blaming me? Do you expect me to keep following you like a lapdog just because you don't like me? Willow frowned. Yes, I left, but that was because my father was hospitalized in the U.S. I called you, but you didn't answer, even my messages you didn't reply. Is it not because you have an eye for her? She pointed at Vanessa. I was stunned. There was indeed a strange number that had called me a few times that day. But those days my information was leaked, I was often called to take out loans, I thought it was also a harassment call, so I didn't answer. But I didn't receive any messages. I thought for a moment and quickly took out my phone. Indeed, there was a message in the spam box, all sent from the same stranger number. Jacob, my father had a car accident in the U.S., I have to go there for a while. I've thought carefully about what you said, I'm not playing with you, but I don't want to tell you I like you in such a rough way as a message, I want to say it to you in person when I come back, wait for me. I stood there aghast, staring at the message, motionless. Did you change your number? After a long while, I managed to say. That number was deactivated, this is my secondary number. I clutched my phone tightly, explaining in a flustered manner, I didn't see, the stranger number was blocked into the spam box, I. Willow just looked at me indifferently. Do you know what I've been through these half months? I wanted to send you a message, but found out I've been deleted and blocked by you. I sent you text messages, but you never replied once. I was so anxious, I took the earliest flight back, I also thought it might just be a misunderstanding, but... She glanced at Vanessa and sneered. 
It turns out there was no misunderstanding at all. You just found someone new. It's a misunderstanding. Hi. Then you tell me, what were you two just doing? Jacob, I was gone for less than half a month. I was dumbfounded and couldn't speak. The atmosphere just now, to be honest, I couldn't say there was no ambiguity. Willow didn't look at me another second. She turned around and got in the car. The black Rolls Royce sped off in the rain without stopping again. Jacob, is she the one you confessed to and got rejected? Vanessa asked me, looking down. I nodded gloomily and took the tie clip off my tie and handed it back to her. Take back the gift. I really can't accept it. But still, thank you. Vanessa paused, a faint bitter smile curling at the corner of her mouth. That's pretty heartless. All right, I will take it back this time. I hope you won't refuse me next time. I was devastated and couldn't make out what she was saying. After saying goodbye, I turned to go upstairs. The room was dark on a gloomy evening. I sat heavily on the edge of the bed and stared at the message Willow had sent me. She said she likes me. So, she likes me too. I slowly buried my face in my knees, but I had pushed her away with my own hands. I admit that when I saw Vanessa, my heart wavered for a moment. I thought there are always people in this world who would like me, and if Willow doesn't like me, then I wouldn't like her either. What was she feeling during those half months when she was across the ocean, wanting to contact me but not daring to? I covered my face. I am such a fool, I messed everything up. The next day, Willow came back to the company. I wanted to see her and I was afraid to see her at the same time. When I occasionally ran into her in the elevator, I didn't know what to say but she had already walked past me without a glance. She really seemed not to want to have anything more to do with me. I racked my brains for several days, not knowing how to apologize to her. As I was considering whether to take a direct approach and burst into her office and hug her leg to beg for her forgiveness, a colleague next to me gave me a nudge all of a sudden. Jacob, did you know that our boss is getting married soon? What? CEO Willow, the rich and beautiful lady has finally been taken. He handed his phone to me with a gossipy look. Just tweeted, she's getting engaged to the third son of Blue Ridge. In the photo, the man was tall and handsome, and the woman beside him had delicate features. They were a perfect match. I had to admit, even I had to compliment, a perfect match. All the young guys in our company are now devastated, but it's understandable. What kind of background does Ms. Willow have? There's no way for the princess falls in love with a poor boy type of story. It's definitely a marriage that matches in social and economic status. He kept talking. But I couldn't hear anything anymore. I stood up abruptly, startling my colleague. What's wrong with you? Without a word, I headed towards Willow's office. I wanted to ask her personally. Just as I got to the office door, a man came out. He wore an expensive-looking suit and was smiling, hand in hand with Willow. I'll come for you tomorrow. Don't forget to eat well. Behind him, Willow's eyes were full of smiles, whispering. Okay, be careful on your way home. Send me a message when you get home. This was the first time I had seen her so gentle. Except for in bed, she had never been like this to me. I came to a halt, staring blankly. The man looked at me with confusion. Willow, who is this? Willow glanced at me, her eyes without a trace of warmth. Just an insignificant person. Saying so, she left with the man at her arm, passed by me. I stood there dumbfounded, my feet seemed to freeze, unable to move. It felt like all the blood in my heart had been drained. Otherwise, why would it seem like it was not beating anymore? An insignificant person, huh? That's correct. Aren't I just an insignificant person? Not until a colleague passed by me, patting me, saying, Jacob, what's wrong? Are you here for Ms. Willow? She just sent off her fiancé, why don't you come back later? I lowered my head, lightly touched my chest, tried to pull up a smile, but I also knew that smile lying was weirdly pitiful. It's okay. I whispered. I'm not gonna look for her anymore. The next day, I submitted my resignation. The leaders and colleagues tried to persuade me to stay, asking why I wanted to leave when things were going well. I remained silent for a long moment before saying, because the reason for staying here is gone. 
I joined this company for Willow. Now that she's engaged, it's time for me to leave. On the day I left with a cardboard box, I ran into Willow at the elevator. She was still dressed in her professional suit, looking high and mighty, showing no sign of ever being chained to my bed by a silver necklace. She glanced at the box in my hand, emotionless. Are you leaving? I nodded without saying a word. Jacob, you really are something. She suddenly smiled, but the smile didn't reach her eyes. I didn't know what she meant by saying this. And I couldn't be bothered guessing anymore. Things have come to this point, she can't possibly give up her marriage alliance for me, so what's the point of clinging on? It would only make me look worse. I offered my last bit of dignity, I wish you a happy marriage. But Willow just stared at me, without uttering a word. The elevator arrived quickly, and I turned to leave. The gaze from behind was burning, it lingered on. News of Willow's engagement quickly spread and even made it onto the local newspapers. In the photos, both were handsome and beautiful, anyone would have to say that they were a match made in heaven. The engagement date was set in June. I can't tell how I spent those days. Frantically sending out resumes, I kept myself busy to not have a chance to think about her. Because once free, I would think of her. The bedroom she had slept in was locked up by me and became a forbidden area in the house. I threw away all the bedding that we had intertwined countless times, as if I could also throw away the memories. During this time, Vanessa often came to find me. Either there was a new dessert shop in the city that had a long queue that she wanted to try, or there was a nice coffee shop in the west of the city and asked if I wanted to go with her. At first, I refused her each time, even being blunt and telling her that I'm not looking to date. But each time, she would just laugh and say, that's okay, I'll come again next time, maybe you'll agree then. After a few times, I couldn't just keep refusing. So I went out with her a few times. Young girls indeed have this magical power, with her, I really felt a lot relaxed. And when she offered me to take a bite of her candy, I really did forget about all the things that had made me sad. But when I returned home at night and was alone, those memories would come back, like a doggedly persistent disease, reminding me whenever I closed my eyes. One day, Vanessa asked me to go with her to the beach to feed the seagulls. Walking barefoot on the sand with her, the salty sea wind and the freshness of the spray from the waves, I suddenly felt a lot lighter. Jacob, what kind of women do you like? Vanessa asked, tilting her head. I thought for a moment. Well, who wears suits well, seems serious on the surface but is actually flirtatious, can have really nice conversations with me, and preferably wears a pair of gold-rimmed glasses too. Before I could finish, the image of someone appeared in my mind. Not far away, a couple was drawing hearts on the beach, laughing and chasing each other. After tiring out, the two of them sat leaning against each other on the beach. The girl suddenly asked, What if we break up in the future? I would chase you back, of course. What if you can't chase me back? The boy thought about it and said, Then I'll keep chasing until I get you back. Jacob, actually I. Vanessa seemed to want to say something, but my brain was in utter chaos and I couldn't understand anything. Suddenly, the bells of a distant church rang out. As an afterthought, I realized that today was the day of Willow's engagement. She would be given a ring by another man, vowing to love him forever. She would share intimacy and a bed with another person. She will leave my world completely and have no more involvement with me. The sea breeze blew through my hair, and I suddenly felt a wave of indescribable emotion flooding my heart. At this moment, I really wanted to see Willow. Once the thought took hold, I couldn't control it. I said to Vanessa, I'm sorry, I have some urgent matters. I need to go first. Vanessa just looked at me for a while, her eyes complex. Are you going to see Willow? I nodded, yes. Vanessa dipped her eyes, and after a long silence, she showed a helpless smile. It's hard to catch a cab from here to the church. Let me give you a ride. I didn't know what to say, so I awkwardly thanked her. Vanessa sighed. You don't need to thank me. If she doesn't treat you well, come back to me. On the way, I was extremely anxious, worried that the engagement ceremony would be over if I arrived too late. Vanessa drove me all the way to the church entrance. Once I alighted from the vehicle, I rushed in. 
I have never run as fast in my life as I did. All I thought was to get there a bit faster, to see her a bit sooner. I shoved open the doors of the church. The priest was all in white. Next to him, Willow was bathed in a rosy hue from the light coming in through a window. It made her look softer. Out of breath, I came to a halt, eyes wide. Apart from Willow and the priest, the church was completely empty. Let alone the man from that day. Did I come early? I felt a scattered fear, or did I come late, had they finished already? Just as I was filled with unease, Willow suddenly revealed a kind of relieved smile. She said to the priest, My fiancé is here, let's start. I was dumbfounded. Wait, aren't you getting engaged to the son of Blue Ridge today? Willow came over and took my hand. He is a business partner. He doesn't want an arranged marriage, so he allowed me to invest in his company to help him start his own business and escape from family control. So, he agreed to act as my fiancé in front of you. You tricked me? Willow chuckled softly. What else? Jacob, I was waiting for you to come to me, but even after you resigned, you didn't want to clear things up with me. Without this, would you have come to find me? Why didn't you come to find me instead? I was amused and also annoyed. Why should I? Willow looked down at me from high up. You flirted with other women in front of me. If I went looking for you, wouldn't that be a loss of face? I am glad you didn't disappoint me. I found myself laughing and angry at the same time. What if I didn't come today? Willow fell silent. It took her a while before she said. Then, I would think of another way. She held my hand, then took out a finely adorned diamond ring and handed it to me. Consider this a loan. You have to buy one for me later. The priest grinned at us. Willow was serious. Jacob, you still owe me an apology. But I also owe you a confession, I like you. In fact, I noticed you a long time ago. But because my father cheated on my mother when I was young which led to her committing suicide due to depression, I've been resistant to relationships. I was scared that my other half would betray me and also scared that I might turn into the type of person I hate the most, like my dad. But now I've realized that I wouldn't betray you, and I will always treat you well, have you always by my side? So, will you marry me? My eyes were sour, and I shakily put the ring on her ring finger. Yes, I do! Two months later, Willow and I got married. Mainly because she was in a hurry, she was afraid that if we didn't get married soon, I would start bringing home new sisters and girlfriends. On the wedding day, Vanessa also came. She wore a disgruntled expression. Jacob, what's so good about her compared to me? She's old, am I not young and beautiful? Smiling, I held Willow's hand. But I just like her. Vanessa reluctantly pulled out a box from her pocket. Here's the tie clip from before, you wouldn't take it back then, can you accept it now as a wedding gift? I reached out and took the box. Thank you. You're welcome, if she treats you badly in the future, you can come and find me, I'll be waiting. Well, wait then. Willow scoffed. Even if you wait until your death, it won't come. After the wedding, Willow moved into my house. I asked her if she was out of her mind, abandoning her own hillside villa and instead choosing to live in my small under 100 square meter room. Willow didn't say anything and went into the bedroom. Shortly after, she walked out, still with the silver chain wrapped around her wrist. I remember, I think you still owe me five hours. She laughed suggestively. Then let's get started. Wait! I panicked. Why are you bringing up ancient history? Why are you holding grudges? Willow pushed me down in one go. If you say another word, I'll add another time.